What is history? Well, it's supposed to be knowledge acquired by investigation, which leads to a clear and honest study of people and the past. However, this has not always been the case. And this has caused a distortion in history that has undermined the truth and integrity and creating a system of racial inequality. Leaving a psychological impact for generations to come. This story begins far removed from the Americas. This story begins in the town of Azamori, on the Atlantic coast of Morocco, where Mustafa Azamori was born around 1500 AD. To the Western world, he's referred to as Esteban the Moor. But to the people, the culture and traditions, he's known to us as Mustafa Azamori. There has not been much written about his early life, but from later accounts, he must have been fond of the ocean and with an adventurous heart. You can only imagine him standing on that African coast, his toes buried in African sand, looking out at the beautiful ocean, not imagining that the soles of his feet will touch lands far removed from him. Lands that had never been explored by Western civilization. The town of Azamor became a Portuguese stronghold and around the age of 22, Mustafa was stolen, torn away from his family and home and sold into slavery. He was sold to a Spanish nobleman named Andreas Carranza, who was an early Spanish explorer. Carranza was an explorer for the purpose of enrichment, not for new discovery or to understand the world and her people, but for riches. Around 1527 AD, Carranza along with Mustafa set sail on the Spanish Narvaez expedition led by Pafilo de Narvaez to explore La Florida, which at that time was composed of present day Florida and all the uninhabited lands to the north and to the west, including North Mexico, to establish a colony of settlements and garrisons in Florida. Narvaez's crew initially started off with 600 men, including men from Spain, Portugal, Greece, and Italy. The expedition was met with disaster almost immediately, making stops in Hispaniola and Cuba on the way to La Florida. The fleet was devastated by a hurricane and among other storms and lost two ships. They left Cuba in February of 1528. Their intended destination was Rio de la Plamas, near present day Topico, Mexico, with the hopes of founding two settlements. However, storms and opposing currents and strong winds forced them off course. After landing 15 miles north of the entrance of Tampa Bay, Narvaez determined that he would split his expedition into two groups. 300 men on foot going north along the coast and 100 men and 10 women aboard the ships were also sent northward. This journey northward came under siege several times by the indigenous population, such as the Karikawa tribe. Along with starvation and disease, death took hold of many. By September 1528, following an attempt to sail 
from Florida to Mexico in makeshift boats. A storm swept them onto the Galveston Island off the coast of Texas. The stranded survivors were enslaved by indigenous nations and many men continued to die from the harsh conditions. Only four from the original expedition survived. Alvar Nunez, Cabaza de Vaca, Carranza himself, and Mustafa the Moor. Mustafa from all accounts not only planned but executed these four men escape. For the next eight years and thousands of miles on foot, these men wandered throughout what is now known today as Southwestern United States and Northern Mexico, becoming the first Europeans and more to lay eyes and walk in this amazing and complex place. It was during this unique and trying time that they categorized not only the people, but plants, birds, and animals that had never been heard of or seen in all of Europe. These records will play a pivotal moment in the history as it laid the foundation for the future of exploration and establishment of cities and towns such as Galveston, Texas. Mustafa was the only one who had the ability to not only communicate with the native populations, but had the ability to trade the few goods they had for food. This only enhanced their survival odds. Three years after their eight year journey from Florida to Mexico City, Alzamori was chosen to be Viceroy of New Spain, modern day Mexico. And because of his bravery, skill, and intelligence, he was also chosen to lead an expedition back to the southwestern United States. In 1539, it was reported that Mustafa was killed by the Zuni nation. But there was not a single eyewitness or proof of his death. Some legends claim he was killed by the natives because how he looked or how he dressed. But that would be counterintuitive to earlier accounts in which he communicated well with the indigenous populations. Other legends have him faking his own death for true freedom. Nevertheless, Mustafa is more than just a character in the annals of time. He represents the pains, struggles, and hopes of the Moorish people in this new world. But most importantly, he represents the strength, freedom, and grace of a Moorish American. We stand in this great city of Galveston, where Juneteenth was born, the day of Jubilee, liberation, and emancipation of millions of enslaved Texans. Not realizing that in their own conception to the historical character of a man, a Moor, Mustafa Azamori. Peace. <laughs>